Good afternoon, everyone. How are you all today? Can you just, uh, okay, please lower your hands. I'm going to lower all your hands. So this afternoon, I would like to welcome all of you to the um, webinar. And today we're talking about the world into the writing class. So in the chat, please, everyone, let's just get started. Can you write your name and your country? Welcome to today's session. Just give us an idea of where you're coming from. So can you write your name and your country, please? Uh, first of all, can you hear me okay? Can you tell me whether you can hear me or not in the chat, please? Can you just let me know whether you can hear me or not in the chat? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? It looks like you can. And can you see the slides? Got lots of hands up. I hope that means that, yes, you can see me um, and that you can hear me. And we are getting started right now, everybody. So thank you so much for coming. Please write your name and your country in the chat, please. Everyone should be able to write in the chat. I'm not seeing anything in the chat. Can you not write in the chat? Okay, everyone, I hope that you can write in the chat. So we are starting today. Um, my name is Anne Armstrong, and I am presenting the first webinar in our series of webinars. The chat is disabled. Wow, I thought the chat was able. Well, I guess we're going to use the, um, I guess we will use the, um, there we go. You should be able to use the chat now. Thank you for letting me know that the chat was disabled. Great, finally, I've got some response. So perfect, thank you so much everyone for letting me know that I had made a mistake. All right, can you just tell us where you're from, uh, your name and your country, that's all. Wow, it's so wonderful to see everyone here right now. Great, 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 that's wonderful. And to get started, as you, as you may or may not know, um, I'm Anne Armstrong and I'm one of the four moderators who for the writing group. I'm based in Malaysia. I am presenting for the, for the writing group, but there are three other people. And we need to extend our appreciation to Rania Halabi, Han Baka, and Iman Alji. Actually, plus we cannot forget the administrators, um, Doa Zakaria and Amir Goma, who organize all of the WhatsApp groups, and of course, organize this meeting. I'm going to lower your hands, so that we can get started. Hmm, oh, let's just get started. So what do you expect from this session? I'm going to start a poll and I'm going to launch the poll and you can let me know what you expected from this session. And we're getting started right now. Launch, go. Great, I can see that some of you are already there. Great, I see a few of you are looking at the poll. 
And I would like to welcome all of you who are coming from um, the Middle East and North Africa. We have people coming from Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Algeria. Lots of people from Egypt, Libya. It's wonderful to have all of you here right now. Tunisia, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, Iraq, Sudan, Kuwait, Kurdistan. I'll give you 30 more seconds to, for, the po for the poll, please. 30 more seconds. Okay, lots of people coming from Libya, Egypt. Wonderful to have all of you here. I'm closing the poll now. About half of you have completed the poll, but that's fine. About 100 more people to go. Okay, I'm ending the poll now and we will be moving on. I'm sharing the results with you. It's interesting. Many of you thought that we would be looking at the online world, but what we're going to be doing is this. Looking at authentic activities using real objects or realia. Many of you did not think about nature, school gardens, plants, about different types of writing. Um, I have decided there is a webinar coming about the online world. So I'm not gonna talk about the online world or the internet. If you're interested in joining that, please join Nadia, Nadia Tuati for her webinar tech talk, which will be coming up later today. Also, I would suggest you sign up for her webinar. Also, if you're looking for grammar, please join Grammar Vocabulary and Pronunciation. Please join Rania Halibi, which will be coming up. Her webinar will be coming up. Um, later. I've got some questions about the recording. It will be shared later. All right. So what are we going to be talking about today? Um, expectations, which we've done. Materials from the world into the writing class. So how do we get the world outside of our classroom into our writing classes? Um, reasons to bring the world into the writing class, the physical world outside the classroom, nature maps, uh, linking all of this together with personal experiences of students and writing genres. So let's just, and writing of different types of genres. I'm lowering all of your hands. Okay, so now let's just move on. Why should we use materials from the outside world? Can you write your ideas in the chat, please? So why should we use materials from outside of our classroom. Can you just put your ideas in the chat, please? We have a couple of minutes for, ah, thank you. We have um, people saying to be authentic, to keep our learners interested, to make it more real relatable to our learners. Authentic, real, I keep seeing the words authentic and real. Real experiences, yes, absolutely to set the context, mm -hmm. to extend our knowledge. There are just so many ideas coming through the chat. It's such a wonderful experience to have such an active participatory um, members of our community. So we have this idea from Majida saying authentic, realistic, and reliable. We've also got this idea of diversity, to let the learners experience the authentic real life. 
to make the meaning clear, to raise interest of our learners, interactive, absolutely, to make it interesting. Mm -hmm. And towards the end, I've got 70 new messages, have a very long answer. Um, I'm sure this is uh, coming from somewhere, perhaps. When students encounter, mm, let's go on to connect new information to real life, yes. To be sensitive, interesting, to improve engagement. Well, this is what I have come up with. And this is from the British Council, uh, teaching English website, an article on realia. Basically, as you have mentioned, everyone, it makes the learning experience more memorable. People can connect with it. It also appears appeals to a larger range of learning preferences. So not only are we appealing to people who prefer to learn from reading, writing, and listening, and seeing, but also those who are perhaps more kinesthetic, who like to see things, who like to touch the world. It makes the connection between our classroom and the world outside seem a bit more real. It makes our classroom seem like it is really part of the world. Um, when we talk about realia, we can't avoid games because games are very much part of the world outside the classroom. Now, I'm not going to really talk about um, um, the text that, that other people write, but if we're referring to different types of texts, we would be looking at texts that are written for a reason, not just for studying purposes, to give learners a feel for the real language, what the real language looks like. Now, you may, in this instance, be talking about language that's aimed at native speakers, um, or you could also have, as you have where I live in Malaysia, we have real language is actually aimed at second language learners. For example, newspapers which are written in English are actually aimed at second language learners. Notices in notices, um, information um, in museums also are aimed at second language learners. We connect with the real world. And as you have mentioned, it motivates the learners. So we've got all of these ideas coming up in the chat. So um, it illustrates meaning and joins with real life. I really like the way that you've described that. Um, real world learning, sustainable, creative, and innovative. Even having health benefits, wow. Um, to extend our knowledge. So these are the reasons why we need to use the authentic world. And to sum this up, this is a quote from the TEFL Institute, and I think that this does it really well. It says, by bringing the real world examples into our classroom, we can help students connect uh, what they're learning and the world around them. This could lead to deeper understanding and engagement with the world around them. So as you can see, it's really important to connect what we do in our classrooms to the world outside the world that our students, our learners, are actually part of. So we mentioned, I mentioned, that we're not going to be looking at the online world because Ms. Nadia Tuelti is going to be doing that in a webinar in two or three hours from now. But instead, I'm going to have you look out the window. What can you see? This could either be in real time, I mean, you look out your window now, car window, a bus window, or it could be imaginary. What did you see out the window this morning or later or yesterday? It, you can imagine your, your classroom window. What do you see coming out of your classroom window? So can you write your ideas in the chat? So what do you see coming out of your window? Okay, thank you. I'm seeing all sorts of interesting things. Uh, this is interesting. We see freedom, the environment, the garden, nature, olive trees, the neighborhood, snowy weather, nice. A cat, oh, that's cool. Woods, air, beautiful nature. A world full of changes, that's lovely. Life far and beyond, snowy weather where you are. 
Well, it's hot and wet where I am. The sea, the mountains, beautiful. Thank you. Farmers, gardens, children playing football, the natural landscapes, air, trees, birds. We see, we hear things too, wonderful. Not only do we see things, but we also hear things. Traffic. A park, oh lovely, thank you. Trees and mountains, beautiful. Nature, sunny days, landscapes, yes. Space, oh that's nice, nice. Dunes, sand dunes, horses, villages. Someone sees Madia, sees an odd, awesome view. We're moving back into the urban environments. We have apartment buildings and your cats. I mean, you might actually meet my cat. The blue sky, the green space, the fields, lovely. Olive trees, nice people and children. You see a stadium of some sort, thank you. Let me see a couple arguments. So we get to see other people too. Clear skies. Now, this is what I'd written down. Um, meadows, space, beautiful. So everyone, now we're just going to move forward here. And I want us to think about nature. And I saw this in the chat, olive trees. So in the chat, once again, please, what do we know about olive trees? What do you know about olive trees? Can you just write some ideas in the chat, please? Okay, they're the, one of the oldest trees around, yes, oil. Yes, they are very long living. In Palestine, there are a lot. Mm -hmm. In the Middle East and North Africa, there are a lot of olive trees in the Mediterranean areas, yes. They're blessed, yes. We get oil from them. Yep. They grow in the desert so they can tolerate very harsh conditions, yes. Oh, they're healthy. Yeah, they are. Beautiful, thank you. They grow in desert. This is an interesting, a symbol of steadfastness. They're mentioned in the Quran, yes. Symbol of peace. Mm -hmm. It's a hardwood. Yes. So we might know where they grow, and you have mentioned locations where we have olive trees. You've also mentioned the habitat that they grow in deserts. It's an evergreen tree, so it never loses its leaves. They need salty soil, deserts. They're resilient, long living. They can handle the harsh environment of the desert. Inspirational. Mm -hmm. So as all the trees are symbols of peace, offering rich, flavorful, flavorful olives, and they've been cherished. They're sacred, or as you have said, they're blessed. And the oil is very important. It has medicinal purposes. This is interesting. The tree has been described as patient. Um, you're mentioning areas that are have a lot of um, olive trees. That's nice, thank you. So now we also, as this is a writing group, how can we link this to writing. Oh, it's also food because we eat the olives too. So how do we link olive trees to writing? What kinds of writing tasks could we do? Can you write your ideas in the chat, please? What kinds of writing tasks could we do? Can you just get some ideas? Okay, we got Sonia saying descriptive writing, paragraphs, writing about nature. Mm -hmm. Process writing, absolutely. We can do brain, brain, brainstorming. Yeah, informative. 
elements that involve nature, absolutely. Stories, yes, absolutely. Fiction stories, factual writing. Mm -hmm. We can do critical essays, we can, or even argument of essays. Nice idea, we can do plays, dialogues, play scripts. A non-chronological report. Yes, we could do that about with olives. Lots of brainstorming activities, scientific reports, yes. We could explain about olives, we can do non-fiction writing, yes. Essays. Mm -hmm. We could do research, yes. And we can do analytical text, we can, yes. So you've written far more than what I have here. Um, we've talked about descriptions. Instructions, process writing, you've mentioned that. Poems. As we said before, they are blessed trees, they're inspirational trees, so we can do that. Narratives, stories, historical adventure from the point of view of an olive tree who's lived for centuries or which has lived for centuries. Informational reports and of course, as you have mentioned, scientific reports. We can also have, I'm not sure whether you've mentioned this, personal stories. So for example, have you helped um, harvest or process olives. So we could write stories about our experiences in doing that. So these are some of the types of writing that we could do. Now, um, we could have large classes. That is a possibility. So if we're going to organize this in our classes, what do we need to consider? What kinds of things do we need to consider? Okay, in the chat, please. I've got the tense of the writing, the type of the writing, yes. Students' knowledge and students' background, absolutely. What type of visual aids we need? Where are the students? Are they A1, A2, B1, B2? How do we reach all the students through differentiation? How much do they actually know about olive trees? Are they actually in an area where they have the experience with the olive trees? Yes. What are the students interested in? Mm -hmm. How are we going to get the information? How do we find the information? Where is the source of the information? Um, something about the students' abilities and talents. So are they able to do this? Background information. We'll probably use the internet, yes. We need to have some sort of controlled writing. I, that's from Rai Zagahari. Yes. How do we set this up so the students can actually be successful? Mm -hmm. How much do we support them? How much do we facilitate? How much do we scaffold? What do they know? Mm -hmm. So all these things would be considered. Um, the other things you might also think about is how do we group the students? Yes, the KWL charts would be very useful here. What we know, what we want to know, and what we've learned. Scaffolding, absolutely. Where do they get the information from? Do they have to find it? Do we give them the source? So if we're actually going into a garden, so we need to consider, plus all the things that you have mentioned, we need to consider the groups. How do we organize our groups? Um, if we have large classes, how do we make sure that everybody is there? So these things have to be considered. I mean, when I, I have been involved in field trips where you have 100 plus students, we quite often put them in groups of 10, assign a team leader, or they nominate a team leader, and they always have to function as a group. And when we want to check that they're there, we do counts. They line up and do a count. Um, we might need to consider, um, need to consider the instructions, of course. 
Um, we need to keep them short, simple. We need to consider how we're going to connect what we do outside the classroom with olives, perhaps, for example, our other plants, date palms, and how we're going to connect it to the inside of the classroom. So how are we going to connect it to the classroom activities? Yet this is a really interesting point made by Mona Harab, um, that if we have students who have different levels of knowledge, they actually can support each other, yes. Purpose-based groups, lovely. So here we are. Th these are some of the ideas that we have, 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 um, have pointed out. Now, this is a, an extension of the WhatsApp groups for the teaching writing group. So when we write, what are the steps in writing? In the chat, please. What are some of the steps we need to remember when we write? Yeah, so I got Amel Yusuf starting off with brainstorming. Absolutely. Punctuation is important. May be difficult because there may be different ways of punctuating. Mm -hmm. Wow, the ideas are just fantastic. Thank you so much, everybody. I can't keep up with it. So let me go down and see what we have here. I'm going to read from the chat, please. So we start off with, as you have mentioned, we start off with brainstorming. Then we got this idea that we need to do some planning and we also need to get, we need to plan how we're gonna organize our ideas. So it's lovely to have lots and lots of ideas, but where do we put them? What goes in paragraph one? What will go in paragraph two? Are we writing paragraphs, of course? assuming we're not doing poetry. Um, we then have to go to the writing stage, the editing stage, and then the, as Amir has put up, the proofreading, maybe beyond editing, um, getting evaluation, peer evaluation. And then of course, we need to publish. Samar Aldakari has said that we could use um, things like brainstorming, mind mapping, absolutely. Um, Sarah Hagazi has mentioned something about coherence. Yeah, how do we organize our writing? Arranging ideas in a draft, yes. Those of you who have been together with us in the WhatsApp group, we've talked about planning quite a lot. So how do we plan for the writing? How do we get the students to plan for the writing? Then, um, remember that the writing would need to be edited. If you talk to people who write for a living, they never finish it once and then just send it off to the publisher. It goes through this process of fine tuning. Purpose of the writing, that's a really good point that would come up with brainstorming. Intro, body and conclusion. Yeah, we have to decide how we're going to organize the writing, absolutely. Then we have, oh, Tyreek has mentioned preparation, which would include the planning and the brainstorming and collection of ideas, drafting, revision, peer checking, and the final draft publishing. Publishing, yes. Great. So everybody, we know the steps. We know about all of us. And we are, of course, I mentioned we could do comparisons, past and present, young plants and old plants. And that's just an example. So now, everybody, I want you to think about a poem. We're doing a writing club, so I want you to put your writing skills into practice. We ask our students to write, so let's us do what we ask our students to do. So we, um, first of all, we're not going to write an essay. That would be rather unfair of me, I think. But we are going to write a poem. We're going to write a short poem. And if we're going to write a poem about an olive or olive trees, what are some of the points we may want to consider? Oh, I've got 99 new messages. Oh my goodness. Let's see what we have here. Okay. Um, we've got organization, brainstorming, roadmaps. Yes, for planning. 
But what about the olive tree? What do we have any words that we can use to describe an olive tree? So we don't, we're only going to do three lines. We don't need to do standards. Green lines, green leaves. Yes, go on. But you see the meadow. You may want to use figures of speech. Yes, beautiful. Seeds. How we plant the olive tree. The fact that they live a long time. Yes. Notice you're brainstorming here. We're putting into practice what we've just talked about. So please think about what you're doing so we can share with our students and also have empathy with our students if they have problems. Similes, metaphors? Yes. We'll talk about the leaves. I've, I've seen leaves a couple of times. It's a golden tree, it's durable. Yes, it lives for a long time. The music, the music of the wind through the trees. Yes, go on. Peace. Mm -hmm. Healthy for the soul and the body. Well, these are some ideas that I have written down here. Um, so I've talked about the silvery green leaves, how it's very old, the twisting tree trunk, and it is a haven of life in the rough flaky bark. Now, everybody, put your writing skills to practice. Write a three lined poem. Everybody, write a three line poem. This is your chance to write a whole poem that's only three lines. I see lots of words that we can use, rustling leaves, holy tree, old, tranquility, ancient. A cadence of words, oh, that's beautiful. From myself, no, 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 you must write it. So you have to write it yourself. Don't copy from anybody else, put your creative juices to work and write your own poem. I see a couple coming up. <laughs> Somebody said olive trees makes them sneeze. I love to see that in a poem. Uh, Rana has said, rooted in stone, yet graceful and free, silver leaves stands on the wind. Lovely. Here I have from Warda Aga Tasaka. Olive trees, a sign of peace, tall and bright up to the sky. Leaves that never lose their shine. Beautiful. Olive is a tree that stands for resilience, patience, and honor. Yes. Hala Mojave has said, the sacred tree known by all, it symbolizes peace for all. The benefits of this oil is shared by all. Beautiful. Um, Omama Amar has said, a gift from God, a sacred tree, a source of hope for you and me. May your branches forever sway in harmony and peace every day. I couldn't stop with three. That's fine. That's fine. I wasn't expecting more, but since you've given me more, that's also fine. I like the, it sounds like we're swinging from the branches of an olive tree. Asma Hussein has said, silvery leaves in the gentle breeze, ancient trucks twist with graceful ease, rough bark holds a world of peace. Nice. Hmm, Doa Adalis said, once upon a time, I planted a tree of olive. When it grew up, I couldn't believe how it learned me to how to live. So we learned the le lessons of life from the, holiday, from the olive tree. It's a lovely holy tree, so amazing to me, dancing and swinging in the breeze. Beautiful. Ahmed Abu has said, olive trees are the colors of our hearts. Whispering takes life where every branch sings. With wisdom in the roots, they remind us of happiness. Beautiful. That is so lovely. We've got 80 more messages. Wow, you guys are very great. Let me see what we've got here. Um, Aisha Tubasum has said, 
Green and black the olives grow, when sunlit grows where warm winds blow. A taste of earth from the roots below. I like the rhyming. Grow, blow, blow. Um, Muhammad Amara said, olive trees big and small, like life strong and sweet and weak. Where is it? I've lost it. Oh no. Healthy use with youth and old and colored olives like olives like humans, white and black, but serve the same great lovely breeze. Nice, that's beautiful. Huda Algamasa said, the sunlight grows, the olive trees sway, the silver leaves that dance and play. Ancient roots in earth so deep, bearing fruit of peace that secrets keep. Nice. Voila, Ramadan has said, the olive tree stands old and wise. Its roots reach deep, its branches wide. When leaves are soft, both green and gray, it whispers secrets day by day. These are beautiful poems, everybody. Sarah Muhammad has said, mm, Sarah Sina, Siham Bohamini has said, when looking at the beautiful tree under which my grandfather was born free, hmm, he fought his life under the same tree to make my father and me live happily. The sense that they sent to lots and lots of different um, wars. In the sun, so warm and free, this is from Mina. Stands the ancient olive tree, roots run deep, branches high, reaching wide into the sky. And she's gone into a second verse of four lines. Leaves so silver, bark so old, stories in it, roots untold. Peace and wisdom, shade and rest, the olive tree is nature's best. Beautiful. Gaia Musavati has said, olive trees stand strong and still. Silver leaves and sunlit thrill. Roots deep down the earth they fill. Nice. I've got 40 new messages. Rasha Nabli has said, silver leaves a gentle sway, catching the sun's golden ray. Fruits and bounty, nature's grace, a symbol of peace in every place. That's beautiful. Now, these are amazing poems. And this is the one that I wrote as an example, but your examples in the chat far outreach what I have written. Silvery green leaves rustled in the lonely wind stood the test of time. So what you've written in the chat is, has actually outreached, outdone anything that I have done here. So let's see now. So now everybody, hmm. So now what we're going to do is, so now what we're going to do is think about why we, oh, I've got more poems. So here, everybody, we need to think about why do we, we've moved from, we've moved from looking out the window to being outside, looking at plants. So why is this important? Why is this important? In the chat, please. Um, I keep seeing questions about certificate at the end, please. You'll get the link for the certificate. So text to yourself, logical transition, yes. To make writing typical and real, yeah. It gets the imagination going and we can see that happening as we wrote our poems, yes. Well-being, our emotional, our mental health, yes. Connects us to the world. Inspirational, absolutely. Get ideas and inspire inspires us, yeah. All these things are very much connected. Enhance creativity and imagination. Mm -hmm. Yep, it's authentic. So this is coming from um, an article on Edutopia. When we put nature into our classrooms, the students can see the connection between what we do at school and the natural world. So it creates that connection. Um, 
Oh, I've got so many ideas coming up into the chat, please. Oh, this is beautiful. Um, imagination. Um, mm -hmm. Given to us by the Almighty. Yeah. Connect with authentic feelings. Yes. And so this is this is why. So we need to think about this quote. When we put nature into our classroom, students can see the connection between what we do at school and the real world. It increases awareness and a connection to the environment. So it also connects us to the environment, which of course is very much important um, given the circumstances we're currently living in. And so question next one, the next question is how do we do this? Um, basic thing would be to add some plants to our classroom. Pretty basic. Uh, go out into the gardens. Grow plants. So we need to grow the plants. Um, we can take nature walks or we can just go to the garden. We may want to think about life cycles of plants. Common colors. There are the colors of nature, the blue, the green. And natural light is also very useful. So there, I'm sure there are other ways that we can bring the physical world into our classrooms, natural world into our classroom, but these are just some suggestions. Well, everybody, we are, we are now, we've talked about the physical world and we've talked about trees and being in a garden. So another way, and this also, as mentioned, has been adapted from our WhatsApp chat. So all this material that we're talking about today has been adapted from our WhatsApp chat. So it's you know, very much a review of what we've said. So we're going to move on from gardens to maps. What is the connection? So we're looking at maps. Not brain story maps, not story maps, but maps, maps of the world. So what would be some types of art activities that we could do that we can think of linked up to maps? maps. Think about the discussion that we had in the WhatsApp group. Think about your own experiences. So, but before we do that, um, is there a particular kind of activity that's quite often linked to maps? Ah, listening. Yeah, I see the listening, yes. So, but this is a writing club. This is for writing. So yes, of course, we can have listening activities, turn right at the stoplights, go straight through the stoplights. I see lots and lots of people say giving directions, writing instructions, yes. But what else can we do besides give directions? Uh, listening, yes, we can of course do listening. We can link the listening activity up to the writing activities. Instructions, go on please. Project, spatial order, yeah. Spatial distribution. Planning for a camping trip. Oh, that's a lovely idea, especially with the map that we've got. The real world through pictures, yes. See the connection between what we've got. The world outside our classroom into the classroom. Storytelling, perhaps a thesis, perhaps an argument of peace. Yeah. To know more about our country, stories about the streets, yes. Playing games, giving instructions, giving directions. Debates about cities, so we could write the debates, yes. Wow, we just have so many ideas. So basically, we are activating all the information we have are that we've talked about in the WhatsApp group and of course in what you're doing in your class time and in your studies. Oh, these are amazing ideas, everybody. Debating, cool idea. Small talk, equally as cool. Okay, yes, we could actually write our own maps. Mm -hmm. Do argument of essays, yes. Draw a map, yeah. So um, you've actually jumped ahead, you don't need this article. Um, 
this is a article from the British Council Teaching English website. It's an excellent one about using maps, but you've got all the ideas. You've got ideas and more from this article, so maybe you've read it. So what kinds of activities could we do? This is a very, very, very short list. We can do all of these things with a map. Mm -hmm. We can do all of these things with a map. And uh, we could do class destinations. We could do itineraries. We can create our own town. We could do descriptive writing, argumentative writing. Uh, what else do we have here? Paragraphing, link it up to listening. Yeah, good ideas. These are excellent ideas, everybody, beyond good. Mm -hmm. We could probably link it up with flashcards, with vocabulary development, and then leading into writing. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Presentations? Yes, we can. All right. So now, everybody, we're taking a look here. Um, destinations, we can plan itineraries for maps. Um, brainstorming, of course. One thing that we haven't talked about is that when all stories, or not all stories, but quite a number of stories, when we read them, uh, they give us a map before the story even starts. So we can actually use a map as a way of developing our writing. So a map of the place where it happens, whether it's a real place or a fantasy place. So it helps to position us within the story. We can use it for telling stories, for writing narratives, descriptions, of course. We can look at the past and the present. So we can get maps from the past. How do they differ from the maps from the present? We can create fictional characters. So we can do all of these things with maps. They are far more than just a listening activity. I think that I think that the where they stop depends on our imagination. So this is a map of Egypt and a very simple map. What kinds of activities could we do with this map? In the chat, please. Okay, I've got this idea of jigsaw map gap fill. Yeah, that would be an interesting one. We've got maps. Two students have different maps with different information and they need to create the completely filled up map. That's a really nice idea. Gives us a real purpose for writing and also for speaking. Mm -hmm. So visual aids, we can use it for building up a story based on what happened there, yeah? Discussion and communication. I've got questions about the WhatsApp group we're talking about. Can you take a look at the Facebook page and see how you join the WhatsApp group from the Facebook page? Uh, yeah, we can actually we can actually link maps up to stories to novels that we're reading. Uh, Thomas Hardy is very much set in Wessex, and we could find the places that Thomas Hardy talked about in his novels, yes. Mm -hmm. Stories, history, eliciting descriptions of places, essays, yeah. Main directions, country life, yeah. Uh, I mean, these are things that I've written, but let's just take a look in the chat, how you've extended these very ideas. So we can do all of these things using this map. So my question to you now is, so this is a map of Egypt. We could, jigsaw, we could use jigsaw reading activities. We can write stories. We can write itineraries. We can write plans. We can write reviews of places of interest. Mm -hmm. We can do a debate about dry and water, 
but dry and lack of water resources, yeah? How do we use it? How do we use it? Yes. Gap fill, tourism. Mm -hmm. We can use it for writing stories, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. What else do I have here? Historical narratives, yeah. Place using old maps, treasure hunts, creating, writing the clues. Okay, yeah, so we can talk about specific details about why um, Egypt's location is very important. Geography, yeah, deserts, oases, so forth. Mm -hmm. Descriptions, yes. So we can write all of these things that you have written in the chat using a relatively simple map. Um, so we're coming close to the end of this uh, discussion, this webinar. A fiction writing, we've done that, and creative writing. Um, but So we've been talking about different things, but I think we need to remember that this isn't the end of the journey. And everything that we've talked about in this webinar, we need to think about how we can bring, how we can bring the world outside of our classroom into our classroom. How would you change or adapt the ideas from this discussion, from this webinar for your students so that you meet your students' needs? You meet the needs of the curriculum and your school community, the parents, the administrators, and so on. So how would you change and or adapt the ideas that we've talked about in today's session? I've got 99 new messages. Wow. Let me just see what we've got here. Mm -hmm. Go into the future, field trips, videos. I mean, you may want to use a map of the country. Perhaps there's a story that the students really like that is situated in, um, situated here. Yes, we need to relate the topic to the environment, the type of nature. Civilization, cool, yes. The authentic authenticity of the language that's being used, yeah. History. Yeah, well, especially when we think of Egypt and the Middle East, we think about history. We can use things besides um, storytelling. We can use poetry, maps, timelines, yeah. Think about particular industry, like tourism industry. The history of Egypt, yes, nice. Thank you, everybody. Mm -hmm. There's so many great ideas here. So um, I've got some, I, I haven't got any ideas here. I've got some ideas, lots of ideas in the chat. and. Here we are. Uh, we're coming up at about the uh, 9.20 mark. So we've been talking for approximately 50 minutes. Uh, these are the websites that I have mentioned. I will share them in the chat here. Mm. And we have actually gone through all of these things. So everybody, and um, we've talked about why we bring the world outside into the into our classrooms, how we do it. We've talked about the na about nature and the physical world, the maps. Okay, somebody's very concerned about the certificate of attendance. I'm just going to add it to the chat in a bit. Um, and then how the different genres that we write. So of course the genre depends on the purpose, depends on the um, 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 on where the writing is done. And this brings us to here, the world into the writing class. And I would like to thank you for coming, for participating. Um, and what I really like about this, now don't go away, everybody. I will share the link for the certificate in the chat. So please stay back while I, because I have to end the show to do that. So please stay back while I do that. There we go. I'm going to stop sharing. 
Don't go away until I give you the link for the certificate, please, everybody. Just hold back for a minute. So everybody, what we have here is the link for the certificate. I've seen people asking for the certificate. Here it is. You have to download your own certificate. Please let me know if it works. And here is the link for the feedback form. Um, we would be really grateful. I personally would be really grateful for feedback on this session. So what you liked about it, what you thought worked well for you, and areas that we can actually improve. I mean, we did have some technical hiccups at the beginning, but we got over those. Please remember everybody that there are two more webinars coming up. One looking at grammar, um, vocabulary and pronunciation, and also one looking at the text side. Okay, so everybody, this is it. I would like to thank all of you for coming. And um, there is a recording coming up and hopefully at some, hopefully, not hopefully, it will be in the, um, it will be in the um, in, in the MANA, in the Middle East and North African page. So this has been wonderful, everybody. I hope that you've got your attendance register. Mm -hmm. The link for the pronunciation session. Okay, I'll have to find that. Um, can you join the Facebook page where you join this? You'll find the link in the Facebook page. All of the links are in the Facebook page where you actually originally came from. So everyone, uh, once again, thank you so much for coming. It's been a lovely session. It's been so interactive. Um, you have to add your own names to the certificate. Yes, you add the names to your certificate. Okay, bye everyone. Thank you so much for coming. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.